We often hear statements like, I have data on 100,000 leprosy patients. I have data on climatic change in the Chennai city. I have data on road traffic accidents and so on. In all these statements, there is a word data. In this session, we are going to rather see what these data means, what are the different types of data, and how to convert these data into pieces of information. Data can broadly be classified into qualitative and quantitative data. See, qualitative data, as the name suggests, we can't quantify them. It is on some sort of a quality. Again, this qualitative data could be a nominal data or an ordinal data. The nominal data, the examples of the color of eyes, the different regions of a city, and so on. And the ordinal data are the data which can be arranged in a sort of an order, like examples, you know, stages of disease condition. Quantitative data, again, are of two categories. One is the discrete data, which essentially is a full number, a number of siblings, family size, etc. And the other one is a continuous data, where is a continuous measurement like height and weight. So these are all different types of data which requires different type of analytical skill. Now, our aim is to get some information out of data. A large set of data, it's very essential, but still looking at just the data, you can't rather get any information. So we need to summarize them. One of the ways of summarizing the data is to get a value of a, a sort of an average. Now, average you mean, the first average that comes to our mind is the mean. A mean which is also called an arithmetic mean, this is a most commonly used and simply it's called mean. It's, you add all the observed values, we call that as sum, which is sigma xi in a mathematical notation and mean is nothing but divide this sum by the number of observations you have used in your calculations which is n. The sample mean is denoted by an x a bar a line on top of x and the population mean is denoted by mu. Let us let us see an example. Suppose there is there are 10 pregnant patients who had visited an ANC clinic and their ages are 26, 31, 25 and so on. And what is the mean age of these pregnant women? The mean is got by summing up all the ages which comes to 260. There are 10 observations. So divided it by 10, it is 260 by 10 which is equal to 26. We say the mean age of pregnant women who visited the ANC clinic is 26 years. Now, one of the problem with this average mean is some extreme values, either big or small, even one or two if they are present in your data set, that could influence on the average because you are adding all and one big value if you add, the whole mean becomes a, an overestimation. So in order to control this or in order to avoid this, we have an, another me, a measure which is called median. The median is it, literally the middle value of the distribution. It divides the distribution exactly into two halves. That is 50 percent of the data will fall on either side. This is a very useful measure, especially when you have extreme values. Let us just see this example. Suppose you have a data on the duration of stay in hospitals of 11 patients. The duration is 1 day, 2 days, 3 days and 9 days for 10 patients and then the 11th patient it is 77 days. Of course, I have arranged this data in an ascending order. The median is the middle value which is the 6th value 
the values that you get n plus 1 divided by 2, 11 plus 1, 12 divided by 2 is 6. So, the sixth value is the uh, value 6, which means the mean is, uh, the median is 6 here. Whereas, when we count, when we really compute the mean for this, it comes out to be 11.8. As you could rather see, 6 is more appropriate uh, measure of average in this case rather than the mean 11.8. If n is even, then you take the average of middle two values. Now, there is an another measure which is called mode. Mode is the value that occurs most frequently. In fact, mode is the only location statistics which we can use for nominal data which are not measurable. In epidemiology, we do use mode quite often in an epidemic curve with respect to time. We look for the modal class and then that gives an idea of the incubation period of the pathogen. The example for a mode is the color preference and the number of persons, about 354 people, they prefer green, 852 prefer yellow, 310 prefer white and 474 prefer red. So, the maximum number of people, they prefer yellow and so the modal class is yellow. So, as you could rather see, as in the respect of rather mode, there can be multiple modes, there cannot be a mode at all in a sequence. Suppose if all the values are 354 here, then there is no mode. So, mode can exist, can, there, can, there can be multiple modes in a data set. Now, we have seen mean, median, mode are three good measures of summarizing your data to get an average value. So, it is not enough, you just rather know the average value. Say for example, you go to a swimming pool and you do not know swimming and you are 5 feet 7 inches and then if the pool manager says the average depth of the swimming pool is 4 and a half feet, you feel very comfortable and you jump and suppose the place where you jump is 9 feet. Then you know the thing that you miss to ask is, is yes the average is 4 and a half feet, but what is the variability? There may be you know place where it is as shallow as 3 feet and as depth as 9 or 10 feet. So, you need to rather ask what is the variability. One of the measures that comes to our mind is the range. The range is the difference between the minimum and then the maximum value of the observations. An advantage of this measure is it is very quick and easy indicator of dispersion. But as I had said about the mean, the range also is influenced by extreme values and also we consider only two values, the first and then the last and in between we are not using the data at all and that is a great disadvantage of range. There is another value which is called interquartile range. This to a large extent take care of this extreme values in the sense we divide the data sets into four quarters and we try to remove the first quarter and then the last quarter and consider only the middle 50 percent of the values and this interquartile range is the Q3 minus Q1 and, and a great advantage of this is this value does not rather get affected by extreme values. But again the disadvantage is, is it covers only the middle 50 percent of the values and then the same disadvantage that we had for range that uses only two values and in between values are not made use of and that is a great disadvantage of these values. And the another measure of variability is mean deviation from mean. What do you mean by that? Say for example, from your data set, every data point we try to subtract the mean and then we try to take a average of this mean deviation which is called and mean deviation from mean. One of the problem with this is, is if you rather do with that, what happens is, is there are some values which are less than the mean, some values which are more than the mean and if you do the uh, summation of all this, you get a value 0. So, mean deviation from mean is always 0. 
in order to get over that, what we do it is we ignore the strain and then we just take the difference and then we take the average. This is called absolute mean deviation. An advantage is it is based on all observations in the group. It is easy to grasp the meaning of the whole procedure. But the disadvantage is it ignores the signs of the difference of the value and the it is mathematically it is not very rigorous to use this value. So, in order to get over that we have an another measure. What we do is, is we do take the difference of each observations from mean and instead of ignoring the sign we square them. The square takes care of is even the minus and then the plus everything becomes plus and then we take an average of that. That value is called variance and since this variance is we are squaring and then the measurement also squares we take a square root at the end and that is called standard deviation. The standard deviation which is denoted as SD is the square root of the average of the squared deviations of the observations from the arithmetic mean. The square of the standard deviation is the variance. So, advantage of standard deviation is the most important measure of distribution while the variance is in unit square the standard deviation is expressed in the same units of the measurement and it is suitable for further analysis. So, standard deviation together with arithmetic mean is useful for describing the data and these two measures are extensively used for further treatment of your data set. I am going to introduce to you one more uh, uh, measure which is called coefficient of variation. The purpose of this measure suppose if you have a uh, different groups different data sets to compare and then you want rather compare the relative variability in different groups. So, the coefficient of variation is the standard deviation expressed as a percentage of arithmetic mean because the standard deviation by arithmetic mean what happens is, is they both are the same units of measurements. So, the unit of measurement get cancelled. So, what you get is a, say, a pure number and that number expressed in terms of percentage that is multiply it by 100 you get coefficient of variation. So, in summary we have to choose an appropriate central or dispersion values. The mean and standard deviation are the most appropriate central and dispersion values especially if there are no extreme values. If there are extreme values there are methods of still using mean and standard deviation using some transformations of your data that requires a little expert handling of your data. Otherwise you go in for median and interquartile range and these two measures median and interquartile range do take care of extreme values. The modern range is normally used for qualitative variables time distributions in epidemic curve. The mean and standard deviation as I said are the most used measures of variability and the uh, uh, summary statistics. Thank you.